Hi, I'm Jilly G. Welcome to my kitchen. Today I'm going to show you how to make my gluten-free chicken pot pie. And I'm kind of part way through the process of making my gluten-free pie crust. This is a double crust recipe. It's in my cookbook. It's also here on my channel. I'm using my food processor today just to make fast, easy work of it. So I've got two cups of my gluten-free flour and one teaspoon of salt in my food processor. I have two-thirds cup plus two tablespoons of butter. And it's pretty cold. And then I cut it into smallish little chunks here, even though it's going in the food processor. It just helps the food processor to not have to work the dough so much. Although one of the nice things about gluten-free dough is we don't have to worry about overworking the dough. And I wanted to mention, I've got my regular gluten-free pie crust here on my channel, but there's also a recipe, it's in my peach pie video, where I don't use an egg for my pie crust. So if you don't want to put an egg in your pie crust, you don't have to. If your gluten-free flour blend has xanthan gum in it, then you don't need the egg. So you want to process your butter, flour, and salt until it is kind of like coarse breadcrumbs. The food processor gets them a little bit finer than pea-sized pieces of crumbs than if you were to use a pastry blender, but this it really makes such fast, easy work of it. Most of the time, I make my pie crust by hand, but I've already made one pie crust that's in the fridge. We'll get to that in a little bit. And then this one here. And so it's just faster and easier if you're making a lot of pie crust at once. And then I do have an egg here that I've already beaten, and then I do have some cold water. So on low speed, I'm going to pour in my egg and then maybe a little bit of water. Once it starts looking like this, where it's starting to come together, that's where you want to stop. And then I've got a piece of parchment paper here. I'm just going to dust a little bit of flour on it. And then we'll just dump out, move that so you can see, and then we'll just dump out our dough. So my dough, it is still falling apart but it feels pretty sticky. Not sticky enough that it's sticking to my hands, but that's exactly what you want. So at this point, if you feel like your dough is too wet, we are gonna be kneading this with a little bit of extra flour, and then of course rolling it out with extra flour. If you find that you've dumped it out onto your parchment paper and you didn't add enough liquid, that's okay, you can still save it. You just take a little bit of water and just sprinkle it on and knead it together until it comes together to form a dough. And I've mentioned before, with gluten-free pie crust, it really is a lot more forgivable than regular pie crust. So if you're intimidated or nervous, don't be. So just cut your dough in half. So this piece will go for the top. And I'm going to roll out my bottom crust, and I've got a nine inch pie dish there. I actually think it's a nine and a half. And then just keep it moving. You don't want to add in a lot of extra flour, but you don't want it to stick. And I always use parchment paper when I'm rolling out my gluten free pie crust, just because it makes fast, easy work of it. And gluten-free pie crust can sometimes be really sticky, especially if you have xanthan gum in your crust or some other kind of binder like that. It really does make a really sticky dough. And just make sure that you can still move your pie crust. Once it gets too big to flip over, make sure you can still turn it around. And I think Almost there. And that looks pretty good. If you have some little cracks in here, just press them back together. And 
And then I'm just gonna very carefully roll my pie crust onto my rolling pin. And then we'll unroll it on our pie dish. <laughs> Try and center it, but it doesn't always work out. I'm just kind of going along and squishing it and making sure it's mostly the same all the way around. So there is our gluten-free pie crust. I'm gonna stick this in the fridge. Depending on the pie recipe, you may or may not need to chill your pie crust. But because I'm just at the very beginning where I haven't even started my chicken filling yet, I don't want my crust to sit out for too long and get really soft. So one of the things about a chicken pot pie, it doesn't have to be in a circle. If all you have is a nine by nine or an eight by eight baking dish, they're almost the same. Put it in that. I guess for that matter, you could even put this in a cake pan. Now, if you don't wanna roll out your top crust right now, you don't have to. You could just wrap that disc of dough in some plastic wrap and stick it in the fridge till you're ready. But I like to get all of my dough ready because I'm already making a mess right now. I don't wanna to have to clean this all up to get my filling ready and then make a mess with all of this again to roll out the top crust. You could make a lattice top for a chicken pot pie, but because the filling is really thick and full of vegetables and of course chicken, I like to have a good amount of crust on the top and bottom. And then I always feel it to make sure it feels the same thickness all the way around. Make sure you can still slide it around. And it's mostly a circle. And that's just fine. And because this is a much bigger piece, the easiest thing that I found, get yourself a cookie sheet. And then we're just gonna pick up the parchment paper and then stick this in the fridge till we're ready for it. So now I'm ready for my filling. I've got some carrots and celery. I've got a really big red pepper. I may not use all of it. Onions and garlic, I've got some potatoes. I also have some frozen peas and corn. And then I've got about three chicken breasts here that are cut up. They're really easy to cut up when they're partially frozen. Just a little tip there for you. And mine are still a little bit on the frozen side. And then I've got some spices and I've got some butter and flour to make a roux. Over here I've got some chicken stock and milk. That's all gonna be later. And then I do have my large stock pot here. Basically, we're making a really thick chicken gravy soup, kind of. So in my stock pot, I've got a couple of tablespoons of olive oil to cook my chicken. You want your chicken to be fully cooked before it goes in. This is a really good recipe that you could use pre-cooked chicken. As for the vegetables, I don't really want them to be fully, fully cooked before they go in. I don't want them to turn to mush in the oven, but also if your gravy is a little bit too thin, then you have a chance for your vegetables to soak up that extra gravy and flavor. So I'm just gonna go kind of bite-sized pieces with all of my vegetables. And this is really up to you. Whatever vegetables that you like to go in a chicken pot pie. And then I've got a large bowl here to just throw all of my vegetables in. So I'm gonna turn my, my stock pot on about medium high. I wanna get all of my chicken cooking while I'm cutting up my vegetables. I'm gonna add all of my vegetables into this bowl except for my potatoes and my peas and corn. Those will go in very last. And then while I'm getting all of this ready, I'm gonna preheat my oven to 425. And I know I say this a lot. You can change this recipe every time you make it. And for that matter, you don't even have to put chicken in this. You could just bulk up your vegetables and make it a vegetable pot pie. And you might be asking yourself, this is a lot of ingredients for one pie dish. And you are right. I'm actually making a double batch today, but in the description box, I will give you the recipe for just one pie. 
Or you can make a triple batch of this filling, chicken, vegetables, and the gravy, and then just put it all in the freezer. You could store it in pint jars or even quart jars, depending on how many pot pies you're gonna make. And then all you have to do is make your pie crust, dump in your filling, and throw it in the oven. I love recipes that you can make a whole bunch of. You're gonna be doing it all anyways. You might as well make as much as you can and then have some extra in the freezer, especially when you're gluten-free. It's so nice to have your homemade convenience meals at the ready in the freezer. I've got a lot of garlic here. Now that my olive oil is hot, I'm gonna dump in all of my chicken. And a little bit of salt and pepper. And while my chicken is cooking, I've got a separate bowl for my garlic. I'm gonna get my onion cut up and then check on my chicken. So I've got all my chicken in this separate bowl and I added in a little bit more olive oil to saute my vegetables. My oven is already preheated. So in goes all of my vegetables. I'm gonna add in some more salt and pepper. And you might be asking why I didn't just add in all of my vegetables while my chicken was cooking. This way my chicken can get a little bit of brown color on it and then I can really get a good saute on my vegetables. I think it just adds better flavor. And then I'm gonna stir in my garlic. There's enough other vegetables in here that it shouldn't burn. And while those are sauteing, I'm gonna start cutting up my potatoes. I like really small bite-sized pieces. And I'm just using brown russet potatoes today. This recipe is really good with your favorite potato. And you know, I think I'm gonna go with just three potatoes today. Now that my vegetables are softening a little bit, I'm gonna add in my three chopped potatoes. I don't want too many potatoes in there to soak up too much of my gravy. And I'm not looking to fully cook my potatoes either. I mostly want to just get them cooking a little bit so they don't turn brown. And once my vegetables look like this, where they're starting to soften, but they're not fully cooked, I'm going to put them right back into the bowl that I had them in when I was cutting them up. And to my large stock pot, I'm going to add a half a cup of butter. And once that's melted, I'm going to add in a half a cup of my gluten-free flour. the rest of my salt and pepper, which in total, this was about one teaspoon of salt and one teaspoon of pepper. I have about one and a half teaspoons of thyme and about one and a half teaspoons of poultry seasoning. And once this is really thick and has cooked for a minute, I'm gonna slowly pour in my chicken stock a little bit at a time while whisking. We're making a roux. You don't want to add in all of your chicken stock at once. It's a lot easier to get your flour and spices mixed in with just a little bit of chicken stock at a time. So I've got about a third cup of my chicken stock left. Once I add in the milk and I see how thick it is, and then once I add in all of my vegetables, I can add the rest of that chicken stock in if I feel like it's too thick. I'm gonna add in half a cup of milk. In goes my two bay leaves. I wanna leave those whole so I can hopefully fish them out later before we put the filling into the pie shell. It looks about as thick as it's gonna get right now. I'm gonna add in my cooked chicken, all of my cooked vegetables, my still kind of frozen peas and corn, and give all of this a really good stir. Now at this point, it does look really thick. I expect that my frozen peas and corn will add a little bit of extra liquid to this, so I'm kind of waiting for it to come up to a simmer and see how much thicker it's gonna get. And this is looking really good. And it smells really good. And because my potatoes are not fully cooked yet, and I've got some pieces of carrots in there that also are not fully cooked, I'm gonna add in the rest of my chicken stock and see what we get. 
I would say this is the only tricky part about making a chicken pot pie. You want your filling to be delicious, of course. You don't want it to be too runny. You want it to be able to hold a slice after it comes out of the oven, especially when you're making a large pie. If you cut your first slice and all of your filling runs out, then it kind of makes a soupy, soggy mess and, and it's hard to get servings out of it. But I also don't want my filling to be so solid and dry that it's too dry. But don't worry, if that ever happens and you have too dry of a filling, you can always whip up a batch of gravy and serve it on the side. Once it looks like this, where you can see that it's simmering, it looks like a really thick soup. But when I give it a really good stir, it's not very much like a soup. It's really thick. This is what we're looking for. And at this point, I'm gonna fish out my bay leaves. I'm gonna turn off the heat and bring it over here to my towel, just because it was already here. You could get a hot pad if you want to. While this was cooking, I got a cookie sheet here. It's actually a pizza pan, perfect for pies. And I covered it with foil, just in case my pie decides to leak. And then I've got one egg mixed with a little bit of water for an egg wash for our crust. So get your prepared crust out of the fridge and then there's my top crust. I want to use a ladle for this instead of my slotted spoon. Bring everything closer. Move this closer maybe. And now we just start putting it in our pie. Now this isn't like a fruit pie where it's going to sink down while it's baking. It might sink a little bit, but not like a fruit pie does. So I don't really want it mounted in the middle. So that looks really good. Bring over your top crust. And it is firm enough that you can just pick it up and put it on the top here. And I'm just gonna break off the overhang. You could use a knife and trim it off if you want to, but this is fine. Ooh, don't get too much. Now I'm just going around and folding over the edge and joining it with the bottom crust. Whoop. Careful not to gouge a hole in your crust. Oh, I did it again. Be gentle. And you wanna work as quickly as you can because where we've got a cold crust on the top and the bottom with a hot filling, it will start to melt the butter in your crust. So work as quickly as you can. Patch it together if you need to. And I'm just going to very quickly make sure all of my edges are sealed. I'm not worried about a decorative edge, but you can, if you want, make a decorative edge. Take a sharp knife. You want to cut some slits in here. And then very quickly brush our egg wash on the top. If you don't want to use an egg for an egg wash, you could always use a little bit of milk or nothing. You don't have to put any kind of wash on your pie crust. So now this goes in the oven, uncovered for about 30 minutes. Again at 425. If you notice it's getting too dark, you can cover it with foil. So my chicken pot pie is still in the oven. And before I started the crust for that pie, I already made one double crust and it's the perfect amount for two little pie dishes. These are 12 ounce pie dishes, five by five, something like that. So one double crust recipe, I've got enough to do two bottoms and two tops, the exact same way as my first one. So now I'm just gonna fill up my two little pie dishes here. And I've got enough filling left over that I could make one more chicken pot pie the size that's in the oven. Or two more just like this. But what I'm going to do is put it in the freezer and then I have a filling that's ready to go whenever I want to make this recipe again.
these pies have a little bit more overhang, so I'm going to trim off to meet that. And these are the perfect size for a single serving if you're very hungry or to split between two people. And what I like to do with these is put these directly into the freezer just like this. And then all you have to do when you want dinner is just take these out of the freezer and go into the oven. And I'm just joining my top and my bottom edges. And I'm not going to put the egg wash on these ones right now. And I should mention, I did cover my pie that's in the oven with foil. Okay, there we go. Aren't they so cute? Now these will just go directly into the freezer. And then once they're pretty firm to where I won't mash up my pie crust here, I'll wrap them really well in plastic wrap and then maybe even a layer of foil. And look, we've got quite a bit of pie dough left. Roll it out, bake it in the oven, brush it with some butter, cinnamon, delicious. So my chicken pot pie, it went for about 35 minutes. And my crust around the edges is a little bit dark, but that's all right. One of the things I really like about a clear pie dish is you can see what's happening on the bottom of your crust. And always put something underneath it. It did split a little bit here and my filling is bubbling out. But doesn't this look delicious? It's been about 20 minutes. Now here is where we find out how good of a job we did with our filling if it's too runny, if it's too thick, and then also the right timing of letting it rest. Oop. Very carefully, losing some of my edge there. Okay, here's our moment of truth. Oop. Now expect it to fall apart a little bit. So it's not exactly holding a slice. Maybe I didn't let it rest long enough. But you know, it's, it's kind of oozing a little bit, but not a lot. Most of the filling is actually staying inside. So that's really good. Now if this doesn't look like a piece of chicken pot pie, I don't know what does. And then I lost a little bit of my crust there. Here, I'll just put that over here and eat it. Now something like this, it sets up a lot firmer in the fridge overnight. So tomorrow, I'll be able to cut a better slice out of it. And I don't know about you, but when I was a kid, we used to get the little frozen chicken pot pies and we would turn them upside down over a big pile of rice. Because I've got potatoes in here and so many vegetables, I'm just serving it as is. So let's give it a bite. And it's really hot. That is delicious. I want to make sure my potatoes are cooked all the way through. Perfect. I like my vegetables to be soft, but not just mushy. And even though the edge of my crust is a little bit dark, it's delicious. Let me know what you think if you make this recipe. Let me know if you use chicken. This doesn't even have to be a chicken pot pie. If you've got some leftover beef roast, throw that in, make it a beef pot pie. You could even use leftover ham. It's what I love about recipes like this. You can just throw whatever vegetables you like, whatever meat you like, make kind of a basic gravy and Again, if you find that your pie is too solid and dry in the middle, just make a little bit of extra gravy to pour on top when you're serving. But thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. If you have any questions or comments, let me know and I'll see you on the next one.